Hello everyone and I am back in Stratford-on-Avon having had a whirlwind trip to New York last week as I'm sure many of you know I was very fortunate at the last minute to be invited to the Superman documentary the Christopher Reeve story in New York at the Museum of Modern Art and I literally jumped on a plane I had a couple of days so I arrived like nothing new is there there but I arrived in New York flew out on Monday and the event was on Wednesday night and it was truly a wonderful experience aside from the fact it's always nice to put your lippy on and get frou-frou'd and do a bit of red carpet which I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed for a minute there on the red carpet but it was the whole evening because it was in aid of the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation, which of course, as many of you know, is a brilliant foundation which is set up to raise money and awareness to try and solve this horrendous situation for people with spinal cord injuries, to try and do the very best for them to find a cure, basically. Now the film, which was in aid of, as I said, the foundation, and very generously I was invited by the foundation to attend, so I was thrilled, and also Christopher Reeve's children. So we're talking about Matthew, Will and Alexandra. Now I knew Christopher's first wife, Gay, because he was dating her when we were doing Superman, but I never had the pleasure of meeting Dana, and I never met the kids before. My goodness me, their father and mother must be, I'm sure, wherever they are, very, very proud of them. They were an absolute delight. And they put on this spectacular evening along with the foundation to raise awareness and also to show their dad as a superhuman being. There was lots and lots and lots of home movies, lots of stuff about the sports he did, his yachting, his riding, his tennis playing, his being a brilliant family man. And of course with Dana, his wife, at his side. So we had that part of the story, which was to me incredibly interesting. Then we had the tragedy of that horse riding accident, which of course was an instant injury for him. And from there on in, he was paralyzed. Now what comes out of the movie is the unbelievable love and warmth of his family who were there for him, whatever. And also Robin Williams, who I was fortunate enough to get to know very well through Christopher, which was great. Robin was always at his side. And you see the daily challenges that they had trying to help Christopher, trying to just get him through those very dark hours. It speaks for itself. It's a documentary that you must all endeavour to see because it's so much about love and family and friendship and determination. And of course, it shows Christopher at his absolute peak and even when he's paralysed at his peak. So this documentary had two directors, Ian and Peter. Don't ask me to pronounce their surnames because I can't. They were there, of course they were. Lots and lots and lots of high rollers. Lots of important people, lots of New York society type people. Lots of ABC people, lots of people I recognise from ABC Good Morning America because Will is on Good Morning America. And boy, he does a very, very good job. Now the other excitement for me was that I met James Gunn. Now James Gunn, as many of you I'm sure know, is the director of the latest Superman movie. And he's also the director of lots of DC comic-y type things. So I was really, really pleased to meet him. He was fantastic. The other great excitement for me was meeting David Corrinsweat, the new Superman. He was there with his lovely wife, Julia, and I was delighted to be able to say hello and to be there at the beginning of this incredible journey that he's on, which I'm sure uh, he, well, he's already uh, very, very popular, but he's going to be a big star from this. So I was very pleased to meet them. And all in all, I want to thank the Foundation for making me so welcome and for giving me this opportunity to be there. And also, I want to thank Jay Towers. Now, you know, Jay is my good friend, but he's a big Superman fan. And he was there with me. He escorted me. He took care of me. He also made sure that the following day I went to the Daily Planet building. Now, how many times have I been in New York and not visited the Daily Planet building? Didn't even know where it was. Hi, everyone. I'm here in New York. I arrived on Monday. Today is Thursday. I'm flying back to London. But not before I've come to visit the Daily Planet building. I mean, which is behind all the hoardings, but it's there. It's there. And I've also, apart from this beautiful sunshine, I'm also enjoying that view. That is about as iconic as it gets, isn't it? 
So it was fun to be with Jay. I had three brilliant days in New York. I had the opportunity of seeing my nephew, Patrick, who's an associate professor at NYU. Poor man. I have a photograph of him as a young kid on the set with me dressed as Ursa and he, him looking a little bit confused, holding a sign that actually has my name on it, just in case he wasn't sure who his auntie was at that moment. Um, so I was able to see him and I also got to see Titus Williver. Now, Titus Welliver, as I know I've mentioned before, is a big crush of mine, and I was thrilled to have lunch with him. And as I've also mentioned before, there's a lovely connection between him, his wife, and one of the villains. Work it out. As I mentioned earlier on, of course, Christopher was a real advocate for change and for disabled rights and trying to improve the lives of so many people who have spinal cord injuries and are certainly incapacitated. It was quite poignant for me because September the 18th, which is the day that I went, the day, September the 18th, the day of the Superman premiere, I shall keep this in my scrapbook because it means a lot, but on that very day it would have been my mother, my dear late mother's birthday, she would have been 103. But the reason I'm mentioning this is because her mother, my grandmother, Gwendolyn, who was to all intents and purposes, a splendid character. She rode, she played tennis, she had a motorbike. I think perhaps I take after her. I'd like to think I did because I never met her. Because when my mother was only four, five, six years old, her mother, Gwendolyn, my grandmother, didn't feel well, lay down and never moved again. Transverse myelitis is the name of this awful I suppose it's a disease, but it strikes at the spinal cord and she was left in the position that she had gone when she went to lie down. So she was left with her legs straight out and her arms like that, completely paralysed. Fortunately for her, unlike Christopher, she was able to breathe on her own. And I know part of the story, the documentary, has Christopher battling, wanting to be able to breathe, not having to depend on this support system. And he manages to get off that tube now and then and take a couple of breaths of air. And that itself was quite traumatic, watching him struggle with that. But my grandmother was able to breathe, but she was never able to lift any part of her body ever again. So the stories I had from my mother right up until just before my mum died, she would talk about her lovely mum and how her mother often said all she really wanted to be able to do, how she wished that she could turn the page of a book. Because grandmother Gwendolyn couldn't even lift the page up and turn. She had to rely on somebody to do that. She had to rely on somebody to do everything else. And my dear mum, who was very loving and, and tactile and caring, said what she missed most of all from her mother was a hug. So to have a hug from her mum, she had to, as a little girl, had to get underneath her arm and try and get under it because her mother couldn't move. Now, back in the 30s, there was no support. My grandmother was at home. Luckily, my family were able to afford a nurse, but there was no equipment. There weren't even any little gadgets to help turn the pages of a book. So she suffered greatly. Then we have all these years later, the incredible steps forward that the foundation have taken. And people are beginning to take those one or two first steps. Sadly, not Christopher. Anyway, I'm, I'm not going to go on about it anymore because I want you all to see it. I just have to add, though, that Dana was just about the most loving, caring human being that one could ever imagine. What an extraordinary family. And it's a great lesson to us all. You never know what's going to happen. So love your loved ones. Love your nearest and dearest. Love your neighbours because... It could happen to any of us.